Hi there! Welcome to the Journal 2021. This is a show brought to you by Centennial College to showcase different documentaries from different students from our very own broadcasting program. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this show. Welcome to the Journal 2021. I'm your host, Susan Rapalo. And I'm your host, Roham Khodayuri. On today's show, we are featuring fascinating stories from six different but all very talented people who are on a journey to find themselves through life. Sound exciting, huh? Well, let's get on with it. To kick things off, let's go on an inspiring journey through the language of body movement, dance. The next story is about Jenny Don. She is a 15 years old immigrant from Vietnam who trained to be a ballerina since the age of five. It takes a deeper dive into her life as a ballerina and her passion for dance. One Dance Dance is a film about dreams and hope, and a love letter from Jenny for the art of dance. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. My name is Jenny Duan. Uh, I'm from Vietnam and currently a foreign student in Canada. I'm a dancer. Mm, I was born into a family where everyone works in the art industry. So from a young age, I was exposed to all kind of dance art form, and I was truly lost in my own world. Dance is so mm, gentle and delicate, but also very strong and decisive. Every move tells a story, um, a thought, a feeling, and I know I was infatuated by it. I was first introduced to dance when I was mm, five years old. Everything was so new, but I wasn't afraid to try it. I learned many different genres of dance from classical ballet to contemporary or from hip hop to ballroom. And I was so lucky to learn from all the best dancers in Vietnam. From Tô Nhu to Khánh Thi or from Hà Lê to Huy Trung. They are such amazing dancers and teachers and it was an honor to be able to work and learn from them. When talking about classical ballet, people usually think that it is dry and rigid. But I think it shows the elegance, nobility, as well as the flexibility of the dancer. It is the queen of all dance. Contemporary dance is much different. It is not so important to form and perfection. It tends to be free and it represents the deepest thoughts that one wants to show. It was passionate that a dancer would live, breathe and dream about this art form. Hip-hop is such an interesting dance form for me. It is a combination of strong, vibrant, and expressing one's own personality. Not only it gives you creativity and freedom in movement, but also to express the rawest form of dance techniques. You can never go wrong with hip-hop. And ballroom.
you will learn how to control your balance and the strength of your legs. This dance genre will give you a sense of sophistication, charm, and comes with it the perfect combination between the two dance partners. It can surprise you with how much emotions dance can express without a single word. In every profession, there are difficulties that each nature of work brings, and dance is no exception. Dance is a long journey and a very hard path to follow. The, the hardest thing for classical ballet is that the ballet dancer can only perform on stage to a certain age. And it's hard to think that with all the training, you can only be able to do so much in that career path. The intensity of training must be maintained so that I can maintain my endurance as well as my muscle strength. It can go up to 8 hours of training just so you can have a strong base. Um, Intrude yourself is a definite and balancing my school time, practice time and homework was definitely challenging. But at the end of the day, the dancers mm, always try and want to give the audience the best performances. The time on stage are also the happiest moments for the dancers when they are truly dedicated to art. Mm, dancing is not only a hobby for me, but it also teaches me a lot about life. Uh, I learned to see the world with a, an autistic eye as well as work hard to achieve the goal that I set out. I've always felt grateful to dance for giving me so many opportunities to learn new things and uh, have a strong foundation in arts. Dance has left an unforgettable impression on me, and while I cannot follow it professionally anymore, no matter what I do, dance will forever accompany me. What a great and aspiring film to start our show. But for the next documentary, even though quite inspirational itself, the film is slightly more intense. It is. It raises an important reflection on how some mistakes can scar us for life. One is a chilling story about an immigrant pursuit of freedom in a path full of obstacles. Let's check it out. I grew up in Colombia. Um, moving to Canada was like being in a movie. Where, where things seem to be working a lot better. They, they do work a lot better. But, you know, in the coming years, I figured that it doesn't matter how things work around you. It's really what you do with the things. When I was a teenager, my dad developed a very successful important export business in Colombia. And of course, given the structure of the business, people wanted to take advantage of it. They decided to blackmail him. They started to harass his family, myself, my sister, my mom, our grandparents. And when everything got out of hand, the DA was involved. My dad and our family went under witness protection and we left Colombia. We landed in Fort Lauderdale, at which point we lost contact with the DEA and we had to make the very hard decision to drive from Florida to Buffalo to cross the border to Canada illegally.
things started to go wrong when I turned about 19. I had a very dark phase in my life where I didn't really know where I was. I partied a lot. And that partying became, it became a business. It became selling drugs. I became very irresponsible. I was answering everybody's phone calls, everybody's texts. I didn't care. I was young. But I ended up dealing to an undercover. Fast forward a couple days. Police shows up at my door. I hide in my closet. My girlfriend answers the door. She tells him I'm not there. I come outside and I spend the next three hours calling lawyers and I turn myself in the day after. I ended up being convicted to a sentence of X amount of days in jail, which I was able to negotiate into house rest and a weekend jail time. I had to change blocks a couple times because people knew I was coming in and out of jail. I had to get out of that situation, so I spoke with a, a, a city worker. She got me into a volunteering program and house arrest. Being on house arrest, as much as I was at home, it was just like jail. It was almost a little bit worse. You could, you could see all the things you could do, but you can't. You can, you can see the door, but you can't open the door. You can, you can go downstairs to do laundry. You can go outside to go to the store. You can't look at cigarettes. You can't do anything. And it put me in a place where I, I lost track of what I wanted to do with my life because all I could do was work, follow the law, stay home, follow the law. And then anything that I wanted to do with my own life didn't, didn't quite fit with the law. So I had to, I had to compromise. And I have learned that there is no justification or reward to do what I was doing. There is, there is really no reward. And I, and I repeat this because a lot of kids tend to, tend to see the short term goals and, and they see how quickly they can get to a grand and, and how quickly they can get to this and that. And, and when I was making a chop that was worth a grand, there was always more, but that more ended up in house arrest. Captivity taught me, I guess, Again. that no matter what happens in the past, you can always settle down, understand it, make other moves, and just not do it again. Just change the path. So Suzanne, I know that the next dog is very close to your heart. Can you tell us a little bit about your dog? Uh, yes. This next piece was actually shot and produced by myself. This is a story about my sister Elena, a teenage girl with an outstanding artistic drive. The story tells a journey of hers discovering her talent for visual art and career paths. Hello, my name is
My name is Elena Rampalo and I love art. Well, I found out that I liked art because when I was little, I used to watch a lot of cartoons such as Steven Universe, Tom and Jerry, Over the Garden Wall, Pink Panther and all of those. And they always inspired me to do this type of animations, but I never thought of it as a career. So I didn't think of it until I was much older, I think 15 or so, that I actually wanted to pursue that career. So I started making uh, art by just sketching on my notebook, like this one. Well, this is not the first one I had. I left my one in Honduras, but um, I started sketching on my notebook when I was little. But then I discovered 3D animation and it made me like more 3D animation than 2D animation. So I started um, sculpting recently, like the past year I started sculpting on programs on my computer so I could make uh, 3D models for stuff that I wanted. So my sketchbook, uh, it's really precious to me. I don't let other people touch it. Uh, it used to be just a black uh, book with like empty pages but I printed out some manga panels from animes I liked and I put them together and glued them so it looked prettier. <laughs> so it ended up being uh, like this from the back. It has some really nice animes that I like and this one's in the front because uh, anime is, the only, is like the main reason why I liked uh, doing animations and drawings because before anime I didn't thought that uh, animation or drawing was a career at all and you couldn't get paid or anything. Well, uh, right now I am still deciding between video games or just straight up TV series or movies or anything like that that includes 3D animation because I really like games and I would really like to make some uh, art and visuals for the games that I work with but I also want to be able to make a move to work in a movie or a studio or a uh, TV series or whatever comes to mind so I'm still deciding between those two I'm Elena Ravalo and this is just one small step into the career that I'm hoping I have. It is such an interesting story about your sister Suzanne, and Elena has a such a bright future ahead of her, with her talented in craftsmanship. Thank you so much, Rohan. I'm really glad you liked it. But don't be shy, I know the next film is about yourself. Well, yes, the next documentary it is a very personal story of mine. It is about my passion for films and my life journey as a cinema lover. How important film is in my heart and how the cinema became a platform for me to find myself, to express my feelings and to follow my dream. I hope you enjoy it. As far as I remember, my parents were fighting all the time. My second brother left the country when I was nine and my first brother when I was eleven. I didn't have anyone to talk about my problems. I couldn't talk with my friends about all of the things that were happening in my life. I couldn't talk with my relatives about the problems that I have in home because of family issues. And my brothers, I didn't want to make them sad. I was an introvert person who didn't like to go to parties. The only thing that I liked was the dark room that I had with the big TV and all of the movies that I were 
my brother in that time. Case. You see, I was looking for a motive. That's very important because if you don't have a motive, where's your case, right? The movies that I couldn't watch in the cinema because in my country we don't have any international cinema that people can go there and watch all of the things that they like. So they need to download all of the things illegally. They need to buy them in the streets. And I was fighting with my father because I was using too much internet every day for downloading the only thing that were saving me in that time. And when I was 15, my best friend turned out to be a bipolar person. My parents were fighting. I wanted to leave the country, so I applied for Australia. And after three months, they rejected me. Salam, bachiya, che khawa? Salam, emruz, emshab, hijda ham. Dar ruzi ki baad wakti ham un shuru shwa bir madrese wo man udus. I didn't study so hard because I thought that I will go in different country and I will start a new life with new people, with new personality and everything. So when I was 16, it was my final chance to leave the country. And when I came to Canada, I could be a new person, new personality, a new life, and people didn't know about my past. And now I'm a filmmaking student in Centennial College where can I learn to make movies about people, about their life, and a way to tell stories about my life, other people's, and a way that I can pursue my dream and show it to other people that if you have a dream, you can just get your goal and anything you want to do is just on your head and you can do it. So have confidence and believe in yourself. Wow, Rohan. Thank you for showing us such a vulnerable side of yours. And I think in some way, all of us would relate to it, not on a personal level, but of course, for the passion and the motivation to move on and follow your dreams. Thank you, Susan. But that's enough about me. Move on, let's do into something a little bit more upbeat. The follow story is about entrepreneurship in the age of social media. Yes, the short film explores Apex an up-and-coming fashion brand, founded by Jason and produced by Septarshi Keshav. I'm Jason, and I'm telling you the story of Apex. Apex it means to achieve personal enlightenment of any kind. It's like a math equation. And originally you could see the double negatives in the logo, it actually, it actually equates to a positive in the mathematical terms. And that's what Apex is. Well, my brand, my brand is, it's, it's going to be a lifestyle brand. And the way I relate it to skating is, since skating is my lifestyle, along with basketball and other sports and things like that. The internet, the internet's the greatest thing that happened to brands. You being able to push your business online, that's the reason why I actually became an entrepreneur. It was so much easier for me to get into this business without having people being subjective or without me having to actually be somewhere, go somewhere, hear say. I was able to attract the people that were interested in my brand organically, and that was all 
thanks to Instant and the online presence of Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. What an interesting story from Jason through the eyes of our very own Subtarchy Kasia. Sadly, our show is almost over, but before we say goodbye, let's dive into the world of salsa music with Stephanie Franco's short film Roots. This is a heartwarming story about a Colombian immigrant with a passion for music. A personal story from Carlos Franco himself. Roots take you back to the rich culture and history of Colombian salsa which leads him through a musical journey full of growth and self-discovery. Bueno, mi nombre es Carlos Fernando Franco. Yo soy de Colombia. Soy ingeniero de sistemas y vivo, pues, eh, vivo aquí en Canadá, en Marcan, la ciudad de Marcan, con mi familia, mi esposa y mis dos hijos. Eh, soy muy apasionado por la música. Yo crecí en, en, en Colombia, en la ciudad de Cali. Cali es una ciudad bastante conocida por la música, pero es difícil poderlo expresar, ¿no? tienes que ir y vivirlo. La música está en el barrio. Desde pequeño siempre estuve conectado con la música. Mi papá es músico, aunque no vivía con nosotros. Y mi mamá también se desempeñaba cantando en el colegio. Y como les dije, en el barrio estaba todo el tiempo la música, en cada esquina. Cada persona eh, era algo mágico, o eso fue algo mágico para mí eh, en mi niñez. Era un barrio popular, como llamamos allá en Latinoamérica, y eso significa pues, que había delincuencia, ¿sí? Y muchas veces te tenías que hacer esa, esa, esa decisión, ¿no? Si ibas a seguir en tu vida ibas a producir, ibas a hacer algo, o si te ibas a desviar, como lo hicieron pues, muchas personas que yo conocí. Yo creo que salvavidas para mí fue la conexión con la música. Yo tenía la oportunidad de compartir con los amigos de mi mamá que iban a la casa, y yo ejercía como el disc jockey. Obviamente me iba bien porque me daban monedas, pero también aprendí a escuchar esa música. Entonces eh, fue algo bien chévere. Ya en la etapa del colegio, ese panorama se fue abriendo más, porque ya no era solamente la música que yo escuchaba en el barrio, sino que me encontré en un colegio donde había orquesta de salsa, había emisora, y los muchachos de mi edad que venían de los barrios aledaños, y venían con, con otros gustos musicales, ¿no? Entonces, esa etapa también fue muy enriquecedora para mí en, en cuanto a la música. Allí fue donde me conecté con todos los ritmos cubanos y puertorriqueños que estaban vigentes en esa época. Con todas esas experiencias, fue entre los primeros semestres de mi universidad que conocí muchas personas eh, relacionadas con, con mi carrera, ¿no? con la parte de Ingeniería de Sistemas, pero también conocí gente de la música. Y siempre hubo en mi, en mi corazón el deseo de hacer algo diferente. Y ahí nació un proyecto que fue el proyecto de Morena de El proyecto de, de Muralla de Bronce fue un proyecto de difusión eh, de toda la música afrocaribeña. Y era, era un sitio pues, conocido popularmente como una salsoteca, un sitio para escuchar y bailar música salsa, pero nosotros le dimos un, un toque diferente porque era, era un sitio donde la gente podía aprender y documentarse también de, de todo ese movimiento cultural. Entonces fue, fue también algo bien especial, porque era un sitio pequeño, pero tenía cada detalle puesto. Y los artistas venían internacionalmente y querían estar allí. Los mismos artistas que yo había, con los que yo había crecido, con esos que compartía, digamos, la música eh, en, en mi época de juventud, eh, ese mismo músico iba y se sentaba y estaba con nosotros allá. 
Entonces fue algo bien especial por esa parte. Llegó el momento en que vimos que había, no había un equilibrio entre la familia y lo que estaba pasando con Muralla de Bronce. Y ahí fue que nosotros eh, decidimos parar este proyecto, pero lo hicimos única y exclusivamente eh, por retomar el camino familiar. En ese camino eh, empezamos también una etapa de crecimiento espiritual y conocimos de, de, de Jesucristo y nuestra vida pues dio un giro total. El conocer a Jesús vino con, con muchas promesas para nuestra vida. La promesa de levantar nuestra familia, pero también la promesa de traernos a esta tierra. Y, y aquí estamos. No ha sido fácil este proceso. Estar aquí no ha sido fácil. Pero así ha sido toda mi vida. Cada, cada etapa de mi vida ha tenido un, un reto. Y ahora la fuerza para levantar ese reto, yo, yo solamente la puedo encontrar en Dios. Es en Dios donde yo encuentro mi dirección y mi norte y con el apoyo de mi familia sigo adelante, ¿cierto? Y la música siempre, siempre está en el corazón, en la mente, en, en el aire. Pero ahorita es un enfoque diferente. Ahora quiero transmitir el legado a mis hijos, a otras personas, eh, sin descuidar eh, lo más preciado que tengo que es mi familia. Con eso se nace, no se puede cancelar. Eso es. This is all the time we have for today's show. I hope you enjoyed the exciting journey today with our featured documentaries. Come back next week for more amazing documentaries from our young producers of Centennial College Broadcasting Program 2021. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at the Journal SAC for more updates about upcoming episodes. Thank you for watching us. I'm your host, Roham Khodayri. And I'm your host, Susan Rapalu. See you next time on The, the Journal. Journal.